Welcome to the July Set News, to get top stories in crypto and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, just the thumbnail suggests the U.S. is losing and it's going to continue to lose the, the crypto race unless some things are changed. So we're going to take a look at a recent development, which just proves my point uh, of what is going on as far as behind the scenes and how America is going to get skipped over uh, time and time again. We're going to take a look at inflation and how inflation is our MVP, our most valuable pumper, and why uh, play to earn gaming is going to be huge. And then last, we're going to take a look at uh, some products I'm going to be following up with later. So we get to all that. But first, take a look at what's going on into the market. So today, it's uh, kind of late. Had a lot of things going on. And I just wanted to you know, uh, get out a, a video just to talk about what exactly is happening in the market. And today's not a bad day. It's Saturday, a beautiful day here in Puerto Rico. We're at 2.25 trillion. I mean, we're up a whopping 0.18%. Wow, that's great. Even though uh, we've been taking a uh, shellacking lately over the last uh, week, two weeks, seems like forever. But um, if we zoom out, in, in all honesty, we take a look at how things are going over this year, we're still doing really good. Now we were expecting, like I said, fireworks in uh, Q4 of 2021, but uh, not yet so far. And I'm not saying that we're uh, going to miss them or they're going to be uh, uh, miraculous at some point. I'm just saying that I still believe there's going to be a little bit of uh, gas left in the tank and I still think we can do some good things. But anyhow, Bitcoin, I mean, today is just kind of like a sideways. We have nothing really big going on. Terra's down a little bit, but that's because it had just a, a monstrous run and now it's in the top 10. So good for all you Terra holders. I'm one of those guys. And uh, that's really about it. Near protocols up 10%, 40% for the week. Good for those guys. And uh, that's, that's just, um, that's the market in general. Kind of boring, not a great day. And on these days, it just uh, takes me, gives me a time to reflect a little bit about what's going on in the market and the things that uh, I want to see done and where things are going. And one of the things that I can see is happening, as many, many of you have been talking about, is that the U.S. is losing. The U.S. is losing this uh, this crypto race in, in uh, uh, marvelous fashion. And they did make a great step uh, at one point when, you know, after uh, China banned Bitcoin for the 20th time uh, and they said no more mining, they were open to having mining done uh, in the U.S. I mean, they really couldn't stop it. I mean, let's be honest. It's not like they're going to say, hey, no, no mining whatsoever. That wouldn't really work out. I mean, but these types of things is what is really stifling innovation. And it looks just like this. Coinbase is launching a DeFi yield earning service to over 70 countries and surprised. United States is not included. So what is going on here? This is a disappointing article to read, but here we go. Coinbase customers from over 70 countries uh, access to earning yield in the stable coin die, just die. Coinbase claims the process is simple with no fees, lockups or set up hassles as the firm believes DeFi has tremendous potential to help increase economic freedom. And they state today we're introducing a new way for Coinbase's global customers to put their crypto to work and earn yield. So the question you might be having right now is, why did they not choose America? Well, it's because they were silly enough to go to the SEC like they were requested, like the SEC requested everybody to do, and sit down with them and say, what are your plans for cryptocurrency and where do you see yourself going? And <laughs> almost like like a uh, an interview question. Where do you see yourself going in the next five years? And they're like, what's going on with you guys? Well we want to do a yield program and coinbase now we're already a publicly traded company on nasdaq so this shouldn't be an issue we are you know very safe that we have uh, our uh, chief compliance officer doing all the things we need to do as far as not listing securities and we really want to work with you they're like great sounds good we'll get right back to you and what do they do they send them uh, pretty much a stop letter cease and desist or whatever you want to call it and said if you do this we will sue the pants off you that is the american government and the sec doing it so yeah they just skipped over the United States. And I think uh, more platforms will probably do the same thing. Why should they? Why should they go and work with the SEC if they're just going to say, hey, come with us, we'll help you. And then, hey, thanks for coming in. You know, here's what we're going to do for you. Nothing. So that is just one of those problems that I see uh, coming about. And it kind of, to really dig deeper into it, because it's not like it's, first, the, the big question I had was, well, well, how much is the interest rate? Because I'd like to know. And uh, this was from the blog post on December 9th. Today it is uh, the 11th. And uh, as we scroll down, it says this. When you opt in to earn DeFi yield, your die is deposited into compound finance. Some might be asking, why can't you just do that myself? Well, hold on, there's a catch. 
Compounds rates are variable. As an example, during the month of October, the APY for dye is between 2.83 and 5.39%, which is pretty good, but you're not going to keep up with inflation, unfortunately. Then what, And then uh, what I was thinking was, well, I can just do this myself. But it says here, even when deposited with compound, your dye remains available to you on Coinbase at all times, letting you continue to trade and spend as usual. Best of all, Coinbase covers the gas fees typically required to access DeFi protocols uh, and their variable yield. So that's what's going on. That's just it's just a, another prime example where you know America just gets passed over. I mean, look, there's spot ETFs all over the globe. I think uh, I think they got one couple in Canada, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, and other parts of the world as well. And of course, we can't get a spot market, but we can get a futures. And you know what's great for futures? You can manipulate that all day long. Not that everything else is manipulated, but that is just, that's essentially what it comes down to. And this really just sums it up right here. Uh, this little piece, this little gem, that's Brian Brooks. And he is the former uh, officer of the Comptroller of the Currency. And he sat down uh, with uh, members of Cong Congress and, and a House committee. And just asked him, they go, uh, so Brian, because you were the former, you know, you were one of us, you were here in, in the inner realm, and now you, you, know, you took the uh, chair of uh, Binance.us, and, and now he's another different, uh, in another capacity for crypto. What's the problem here? What do you see as the issue? Just listen to this. Okay. There are some other can, can you say why we can't do that here? Sure. It, it's because the Securities and Exchange Commission has consistently refused to approve products that other G20 nations have approved. So we're behind the curve? Unquestionably. So given your so yeah unquestionably and that's uh coming straight from the horse's mouth as he says look our hands are tied you know if the sec wants to do that they want to you know just kind of briefly tell people what potentially is a security what's not security well it's kind of hard to launch new products if you're afraid you're going to get sued by the u.s government and get shut down it's really hard to really get innovation in that regard and then the next question was well how did you guys deal with it and this was even a better response so here's another piece that i took for and this is the last one listen to this in my old agency, the OCC, what would happen is a bank would come to us with a new activity proposal and we would give them an answer. We would either give them a non-objection or we would not give them a non-objection. And it was very clear whether they would be allowed to access that. What happens in the United States is uh, you have a new crypto project and you walk into the SEC and you describe it in great detail and you ask for guidance and they say, we can't tell you. And you list it at your own peril. So yeah, essentially that's it. Like people come in and say, this is the criteria. You don't meet the criteria you do. And that's it. Very cut and dry. But here with the SEC, it's a lot different of what's going on. So if we want to see about, you know, one of the reasons why things are being stifled and why America is behind the curves, curve is because of this. So if we just take a step back and go, what's going to happen in the future? Well, if you're a pretty savvy tech company and you want to launch a product, uh, you will just will bypass the U.S. That's okay. U.S. isn't the center of the world. I know, I know people in uh, EU, Australia, and every other place are going to say, yes, exactly. But uh, that's exactly what's going to happen. And if this keeps continuing, it's just going to really slow things down. But the last thing I want to talk, just mention is this before we move on. I want you to think about right now how far the market would be if America just said, you know what, here's a little legislation, just like we did uh, with the internet back in the early 90s. This is the only thing we want to do is we want this, this, and this, and that's it. And then we'll leave it up to the free market system, which is what the whole country is based on, and you guys decide. And we'll just kind of play things as year as we go forward because we believe in our citizens and how they can do things and how they can innovate and make greater things as opposed to us being a nanny state. Just going to throw that out there. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. And these next ones go pretty quick. Uh, inflation is our MVP. So just so you know, if you didn't see this little piece, uh, this is by CNBC just reporting that uh, inflation, if you haven't heard, surged 6.8% in November. That's in November. So 6.8%. So when you're talking to your family, friends, and loved ones, and you're talking to them about investments, whatever that may be, maybe it's crypto, maybe it's uh, stocks, maybe it's real estate, I have no idea. But remind them that the cash that they have in savings it is being eaten away by the most insidious tax called inflation and if they don't keep up with inflation the purchasing power keeps going down and this is just proof and that's just in one month i can't tell you what's going to be uh what it's this month but it's not looking too great so when we hear these words about inflation these are like uh 
the cowbell to say, hey, maybe we should start talking about crypto and digital assets and as far as like an investment. To me, inflation is going to be the driving force as to why people get into crypto and digital assets or just one piece. And then also this is from uh, Charlie Vileo. He talks about this is from the CPI report and how things are going up. Check this out. Gasoline, 58%. Used cars, 31%. This is all increased as far as inflation. Gas utilities, 25%. Meats, fish, eggs, 12%. And you can see the whole thing, right? My big thing is this. As the world, I mean, depending on where you're at, of course, it gets pretty cold in certain areas, wherever you live. So if the price of uh, gas is going up and, well, the price of gas or petroleum or for, to actually, for electrical energies to actually go up, how much is that going to affect the little person moving forward and all these different prices i think is going to put into effect as to why we are so behind the eight ball as far as economics and not just in america but globally let me know what you think about that in the comment section kind of a, a morbid type of thing to talk about but it is what it is and lastly last to last play to earn gaming and i know that on this channel we talk a lot about the basics the blue chips but i need you guys to just know that I do think that uh, play to earn gaming is going to be big. And this is one of the reasons why, because you have to understand there's this thing called Fortnite. I don't know if you ever heard about it. I've uh, played it a couple of times, it's kind of fun, but not my cup of tea, but I just pulled this and I was talking about this in our, in our video, the DCA with uh, me and Ben from the Cryptoverse and James from uh, Invest Answers. And I just pulled out this stat and it says it was this uh, other games have surpassed a billion dollars in revenue in their first year. Fortnite was the first to do it as a free-to-play game. Did you know that Fortnite is free-to-play? I'm sure most of you do. Some of you may not. Like, what's Fortnite? It's just a game that you can get in PS4 and or you know different uh, outlets and different platforms. PC. I don't, I don't know. If it's, I think it's back on iOS. But you can play this game for free. So how the heck they make a billion dollars in their first year? Well, it goes like this. See all those those crazy skins and all those weapons and all those things. Well, you can. You could play like crazy and get them, but you're going to get wiped out. Or you can just pay for them, all the different in-game purchases. Well, that makes sense, right? And all of a sudden, you, you got a very popular game. You're making a billion dollars for free to play. Who wouldn't want that? And then, but just remember this. Even that, in 2018, Fortnite's account accounted for only 2% of the gaming industry's global annual revenue of $109 billion in 2018. So I just want to have you think about this for a second. In the very beginning when I played games, you bought the games. You actually had to go buy Super Mario Brothers, right? Put it in there, blow on the cartridge, stick it in Nintendo in terms of that, that. And off you go. Then these things called free-to-play games came out. And everybody's like, that's the big thing. That's great. And uh, people are like, how do you make money? Let's say you make money. Now the next evolution is, well, how about if we pay you to play the game? Pretty insane, but that's exactly it. So they're going to say, hey, you know what? You can actually play this game and we can actually pay for you to play it. So I think it's just the natural evolution of what's going on. To prove my point just a little bit more, I just want to make mention of this little snippet here as far as esports. Uh, this is the things that you see on TV where people are just playing the games for money. In 2021, the global esports industry was valued at more than a billion dollars. That's a 50% increase from the year before in 2020. And there's another, another great game I've been talking about, Roblox. I've played this with my grandsons. Really fun. Free to play. Well, check this out. User spending from 2018, it started at 91 million. Now in Q3 of 2020, 308 million. And Roblox users has just kept going up as time goes on. So again, if you're looking at games to play, and like, well, that's nice that it's free, but I'm going to go over here because they're going to pay me to play this game. So that's why I'm excited about this sector, especially being built on different blockchain platforms and NFTs and different skins and weapons and all the stuff that you can get. So it makes a lot of sense to me. And I'm going to be covering the next three ones. Avagachi, new one called Gensokishi Online. Big one because it's already out on uh, different platforms, play PlayStation and uh, Switch, and then also Big Time. So I'll be talking about those in general later on, but that's what we have for today. So look, I know it's kind of a, a, 
a video that had to be said. I'm sorry, but uh, US is pretty much losing this battle right now. I hope it can actually regain, but it has to go through a lot of hurdles. So if you found some value in this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things to talk about are time sensitive. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.